Hi, feature selection is an important piece of your machine learning workflow. There aren't a lot of tutorials online that explain the different feature selection techniques. In this video, I plan to cover recursive feature elimination and select K best. So stay tuned. Let's start by importing the necessary modules. I've created a function called as generate underscore accuracy underscore and underscore heat map, which accepts the model. It accepts the Y target as well as the Y predicted and it gives out the accuracy, the F1 score and the confusion matrix. This is a classification problem. I have a data set called diabetes.csv. I import that data set into a data frame called as DF. Let's look at the shape of the data frame. It has 768 rows and 9 columns. When I look at the info, I don't have any missing values. So all the 768 rows contain values for all columns. Let's see how the target variable is distributed. We have a binary classification problem in hand with 500 zeros and 268 ones. So there is a class imbalance. Currently the objective of this video is not to tackle with class imbalance, but to deal with your feature selection. Let's see how our data frame looks like. This is the first five rows of our data frame. You have seven independent columns and one dependent column, which is your outcome. Given the set of features, you want to predict if someone has diabetes or does not have diabetes. Having diabetes is signified by logic one. Not having diabetes is signified by logic zero. I create additional features such as blood pressure square, blood pressure cube, blood pressure square root. The same goes for glucose as well. I create a custom column called as glucose blood pressure, which is the multiplication of blood pressure and glucose. And also a column called as age BMI, which is the multiplication of age and BMI. Let's now look at what the data frame looks like after adding the new columns. So these are the new columns that I've added. On additionally, I also have the previous columns in hand. Let's see if I have any categorical columns. As you can see, there is no categorical columns in our data frame. Let's find out the total number of numeric columns that are there. So these are the total number of numeric columns in my data frame. I store the value of outcome into a target variable, which would signify the target column. Let's find out the correlations between the different independent features as well as with respect to the target variable, which is outcome. As you can see, you have good amount of multicollinearity in picture, wherein you have features which are correlated to your target variable, which is outcome. On top of that, they are also co heavily correlated with respect to themselves as well, like glucose and glucose cube are heavily correlated with each other. Let's separate the X and Y values. Let's look at the shape of X and Y. X has 768 rows and 16 columns. Y has 768 rows and one column. Let's split the data into train and test. Now that we've split the data into train and test, first let's create an instance of the logistic regression module and create a baseline model by fitting the X train and Y train in it. I have taken all the features in this model. Now let's check what is the accuracy when we test it out with the testing data set. So as you can clearly see, it's a fairly uh, decent model with an accuracy score of around 75%, F1 score of 0 0.60, and this is the confusion matrix that you have. So you have some amount of false positives as well as false negatives in place, which is not the right thing to have in your model. Now is the point where we start feature selection. We start with something called as univariate feature selection. We pick one feature, do a chi-square test with the target variable, find out its statistical significance of the test of independence, and then keep the feature based on the strength of the significance. So that's how univariate feature selection is done. The first way of doing univariate feature selection is by using something called as select k best. I've already imported the library in the initial steps. So the way you do that is you specify the mechanism by which you want to do feature selection. In our case, it is chi-square, wherein you will have one feature selected with respect to a target variable. You will find out the statistical significance of the independence of the two. You fit this model into the X train and Y train. After you've run this, let's see what the significance values are with respect to your univariate feature selection using chi-square. So as you can see, glucose cube has a very 
high significance ratio with respect to your target variable which is outcome similarly you have blood pressure cube it's mostly finding out the variation in data since you have cubed it you have good amount of variation in data this process however does not take into account your multicollinearity which was introduced deliberately by me so whatever values you get i am assuming won't be that accurate enough there would be some increase in the accuracy going forward but it wouldn't be the best model that you can create out of the features that you have in hand so what i do is now since i have created the chi square method wherein i select the top 5 features i transform the x train and y train based on the transformation using the chi square that i've already designed let's see how the whole transformation has occurred i first look at the x train which is all your 18 columns but using chi square i've given a limit of 5 so that is what is evident here i have just 5 columns when i use select k best using chi square that is what i see here now when i create a model using the five features and check the accuracy score it's increased so my overall accuracy is increased from 0.75 so it's increased from 0.75 So initially it was point seven five nine eight. Now it's increased to point seven seven one six. So there is a slight increase by some amount of univariate feature selection. But if you want to keep going forward, then there are multiple ways of doing it. One of them is recursive feature elimination. The way recursive feature elimination works is it's a backward compatible way of doing feature elimination or feature selection what you do is you start off with initially all the features build a model check the accuracy score then in the next step what you do is you have the option of step equal to 1 you remove one feature build the model again and see how much of variation is caused in the accuracy score or the f1 score or the matrix that you are chasing if that change is significant enough you keep that feature or you remove that feature so your feature importance is designed by how much of your accuracy varies when you keep the feature and when you remove the feature the way you do recursive feature elimination is you instantiate an object of rfe and fit your x train and y train let's see which features are more relevant to us so these are the features all the features which have the value 1 that is clearly signifying that those are the most important features for us whatever transformations you have done you have to incorporate that you have now reached to the feature important stage where you have narrowed down upon eight important features now you want to select those features only so you use the transform function to transform your existing training data into the transformed eight column features so this is how your transform data would look like now you just have eight columns wherein your eight columns are generated using the rfe function that is there once you have the features ready you fit the model again and check the accuracy score so as you can clearly see now the accuracy is gone up from 77 to 78 Seven four percent. Now that we have done that, there is a variant of RFE as well, which is RFE with cross validation. I create an instance of the RFE cross validation module and save it into a variable called RFE CF. I fit the X train and Y train, and these are the best features that it tells. So what this feature does is it calculates the cross validation score, keeping values or changing values from one till n. So if I have fifteen features, I'll first build a model with one feature, then with two features, then with three features. selecting the three best features or two best features that give me the best accuracy so this is a very powerful way of doing feature selection so let's see how your grid scores are so these are the accuracy scores with different number of features and different types of features now that we know that the maximum value if you can scroll through the list i can see the maximum value at this point which is 0.77 let's plot and see how it looks So as you can see the maximum value occurs at this point which is point 8 the first thing that i do is i transform again based on the variable that i've created which is rfe cf i fit the data and i generate the accuracy score as you can clearly see there is an increase in accuracy now you have your accuracy score shooting up to 78.7 which is your testing accuracy your f1 score goes up and this is your confusion matrix now this is a small attempt in showing how feature selection works If you do have any questions with what we covered in this video then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them then the easiest way is to simply like the video 
and give it a thumbs up and also it's a huge help to share these videos across with anyone whom you think would find them useful. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.